Vladimir Putin has addressed the nation after Wagner mercenary forces claimed control of military sites in Rostov-on-Don. He described the move as treason and said decisive action will be... Это как раз сейчас перемены, которые не было в течение 100 лет. Там, где вместе двигаем эти перемены. Берегите, пожалуйста, дорогие, дорогой друг. Welcome to the crypto teacher. And you know I come back with that video just to make you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And guys, the IMF in Morocco is very important. Those who have my NWO book understand the relationship between Morocco and America. But we have the IMF and central bank leaders going over this new digital economy. And yes, this is going to be boring, but it's so important because they're mapping out the plan of your future, your kids' future, your kids' kids' futures. Guys, the fourth industrial revolution, like I state, is right around the corner. And they're going to bring it in as a benefit, but we know when it comes to technology, it can be used for good or evil. This new financial system is so the robots, algorithms, and drones can take over this economy without a human involved. Remember, the slave still has control. If you stop work right now, everything stops. But once the machines come in, all that control is over. And don't get me wrong, guys. We were not put here for jobs. We were put here to work towards the Creator, the Most High. We know in Hebrew, job means persecution. And if you go to the book of Job, what is he doing? He's questioning the Most High because of his persecution. But guys, with all this technology moving forward, it's time to start creating. And that's the reason why it's so important for you to wake your friends and family and get in the lab. Guys, you do not want to be on the wrong side of history. And remember the crypto teacher told you, because he knows when it comes to the New World Order, it's all planned out. You have a wonderful day. Some of the $45 billion paid annually to remittance providers should go into the pockets of those who earned that money in the first place. Steps are being taken. In the strong show of multilateral cooperation, the international community is enhancing cross-border payments following the G20 roadmap. More than ever, the IMF, the World Bank, the BIS, and the FSB have been tightly collaborating with central banks around the world to bring each of their comparative advantages together and to create a new future for payments. So let me go deeper into the subject matter, which is a framework for a cross-border payments and contracting platform. So the emphasis is not just on payments, but contracting as well. And I'll, ex I'll explain more what I mean. Our work on platforms aligns well with this thrust. So this roadmap of the G20, the, uh, the World Bank, uh, the BIS and the FSB. So the platform work has been benefiting from discussions with other organizations and central banks. Platforms are like digital town squares where people and businesses meet to transact under the watchful eye of local authorities. Much like the town squares must have been in bustling phase back in the 8th century, or in Marrakesh's beautiful Medina. Expressed in today's language, the vision for a trusted ledger, which is essentially an electronic document representing property rights in digital versions of central bank reserves in any currency that can be traded among participants. So payments are not just the transfer of value from A to B, they require complementary services such as 
obtaining foreign currency, and managing risk. They involve the transfer of information and the identity of transaction parties and their intentions. So our trusted ledger cannot exist in a vacuum. It must exist in an environment allowing for basic financial contracts to be customized and exchanged in a safe and efficient manner. It must allow information to be carefully managed so only those who need it can see it. Let me dive a little deeper and speak first about settlement, then about programming, and finally about information. These are the three layers of the XC platform. First is the settlement layer. The platform would allow us to settle money denominated in many different currencies. It's a multi-currency approach. Which forms of money? We propose to use the safest possible form of money to reduce counterparty credit risk. Hence, we propose to use central bank reserves in the exchange of cross-border payments. Those reserves sit on the books of the central banks with different accounting systems. To make these interchangeable, we propose to create a unique digital representation of those central bank reserves on the platform. To make a payment from one country to another, participating banks would deposit their domestic central bank reserves in an escrow account. This escrow account will be controlled by the platform operator, and in return, a digital version would trade on the platform. For example, in the case of the Moroccan ceramics exporter, its bank would receive tokenized reserves from the Spanish customer's account. The exporter's bank would credit the exporter's account, but it may not be terribly ha happy holding those euro reserves, so it could then sell them to another participant on the platform in exchange for domestic reserves. Settlement would be quick, final, and safe. The ledger would be controlled by the platform operator, and only this platform operator could see and settle the transactions. The single ledger would ensure that there is unique description of who owns what, so no double spending can occur. And importantly, the XC platform would allow a multi-currency system without imposing a single or new settlement asset. The choice of currencies used on the platform would remain at the discretion of the participants and would not favor one currency over another. Central banks would remain in full control of which institutions reserve which uh, currencies to start with. No changes in legacy systems, arrangements, or institutions are needed. The system would be fully compatible with today's domestic payment systems because it links into central bank reserves. Now, the second layer of this XC platform is the programming layer. When making payments, participants may want to obtain foreign currency, synchronize or delay payments, or manage risk. Countries may wish to implement capital flow measures, and services could be programmed by customizing and bundling basic functions available on the platform. Think of smartphone apps. Developers created them by accessing and customizing preset functions, allowing the app to respond to a tap on the screen or to retrieve data from the GPS chip. But developers cannot interfere with the phone's operating system and cause it to crash. So that is a very profound innovation it's separate and safe, so you can allow programmability without interfering in the underlying workings uh, of the platform. This allows customization and the development of specific products 
uh, by the private sector. Programming also allows contracts to be automated. For instance, the current swap of one currency for another can be programmed to occur when a certain price is met. Today, parties provide a market maker with their orders, which means giving up precious information. And even if they agree to trade, the other party can walk away. Settlements can fail. Instead, automated contracts can bring improvements Agents may trust technology and counterparties cannot walk away from an automated trade as it's all on a single ledger based in escrowed money. When programs run on the same ledger, they can be consistent with one another, so contracts to receive money tomorrow can be pledged as collateral today, saving liquidity. Let me clarify that I'm speaking here of programming one's own transactions with money, not money itself. Once transacted, money would go right back as being perfectly fungible. So programmed transactions are different from programmable money. Thematically identifying what needs to be regulated the same way in different countries is so important and that kind of exchange we have today our engagements uh, they are the pathway for that common regulatory framework ultimately we also need common infrastructure and this is the notion of a platform that we at the imf are uh, developing and as i said tobias will give you the details but basically what it is is to make the uh, connectivity, the interoperability possible through that uh, uh, common platform. What would happen if we fail? Well, then we would have, unfortunately, settlement blocks. Some, some currencies talk to each other and others don't. In a world of economic fragmentation, this is the last thing we, we want. Uh, so for, at the IMF, we believe that our role to uh, systematically advance on these three key issues and and yet and yet uh, a partnership and, and this is very important the partnership of all institutions obviously the uh, Arab monetary fund the uh, central banks of individual countries BIS the bank for international settlement FSB we all working together we can have answers to these questions uh, that make interoperability not the term but reality Operation, uh, can progress of course without having uh, uh, the uh, uh, cbdc's uh, connecting to each other uh, why because we still we have our uh, kind of traditional uh, settlement systems that are based uh, on still digital uh, because we use um, uh, transfers that are done digitally. We don't carry big bags of cash from one country to, to another. Uh, the problem is that if countries develop CBDCs, but they develop them only for domestic deployment, we are underutilizing their capacity. Going to a different economy, and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go, but clearly we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're, going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers. In Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. And so we'll import Chinese-based CBDC technology. So it's going to be CBDC in a box. Uh, provided to you by the People's Bank of China. But every stock, every bond, every currency, every commodity, every piece of art, every private business, every piece of real estate will eventually be a token on a blockchain, 
an entry on a ledger, permanent and immutable. We will have truth instead of trust, and we will save over $7 trillion a year. Six to 8% of global GDP is wasted by the friction of the trust industry that's necessary when you have dual entry accounting. With triple entry accounting, which is what a blockchain is, mm -hmm. we get rid of all of that friction. It's a beautiful future. I actually believe this technology is going to be very important. I am, I, you know, look at it. We have been part of a huge revolution in investing through ETFs. We believe that ETFs will be changing the whole way we invest. Many people still use it as a means, well, people are investing it f for indexing. No, the majority of people who are putting money in an index, in an ETFs are active investors that are buying exposure. The entire bond market is being transformed as we talk right now. I believe the next generation for markets, the next generation for securities will be, will be tokenization of securities. Um, we will, and if we could have that distributed ledger that we know every beneficial owner, every beneficial uh, seller, we all have our, our, our code right. of who's buying, who's selling, instantaneous settlement. And think about it, it changes the whole ecosystem. Crypto teacher and the New World Order book, plus the three kids' books, it's time to re-educate. Also, New Crypto's Coinbase, Bitchu, Bunnets. Do not forget book links and crypto links are in the description. The stock channel, guys. Don't forget to go like, subscribe, spread everywhere. You have your Kobo, your chip size, your banking, your gaming. While everybody's sitting at home, get on stocks to see where the biotech stocks. And while everybody's at home wishing, they were still getting that free money. What are they doing? Drinking and smoking weed. Don't forget about those stocks and you have a wonderful day. The most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come, Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers. And that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids' books. You know I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis. Whether it's your job, whether it's in your community, we have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share, but this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figure. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends, so therefore we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture. We have to re-educate. But let's get into the video. Part one, King Yahshua, and Drama Tim. It's mandatory to get part one, part two, and part three of this series. It's time to re-educate Generation Z.